When we were young kids, every single one of us at some point in our lives had a vision of becoming great at something. Maybe it was to become a doctor, astronaut, professional athlete, CEO of a company. We all had a desire to be something worth remembering. When I was in middle school, I started learning about human performance. I learned about how the mind, your self-image, and your environment all work together to impact your end result. It made me think, if all of these are related, what makes a person world-class? What makes a person become uncommon amongst the uncommon? Was it the way they thought, their genetics, their talent? Or was it a matter of being in the right place at the right time, like Malcolm Gladwell says in the book Outliers? Over the last 15 years, I've studied many of the best top performers in different fields. I started to realize that these individuals, they're regular people. They've just tapped into something that most of us avoid. My obsession with the power of the mind and how it all works, it started in my early teens. I remember getting interested in what a human can actually accomplish with the right mental programming. It started with this moment that we all had when we were young, when we would look up to our heroes, our role models, whatever it was, we did our best to imitate them. We acted like them, dressed like them, performed like them, at least in our young minds. Then at some point, someone told you that you just weren't destined for that path. They said you either don't have enough talent, you're just not smart enough, or you don't have the skill. It was a moment you'll never forget because it was the first time someone actually told you to give up on a dream. When it first happened to me, I was about 10 years old, and it was at that moment that I realized the majority of the world is not going to support you in the pursuit of your goals, especially into adulthood. And the reason is, is that most people, this goal is too large for them to even comprehend. They cannot even fathom the amount of work, the amount of dedication, the amount of commitment that it takes to achieve something that lofty. So they tell you that you can't do it. We all had that scenario and that is the point that everything changed. Now every one of your role models that you looked up to and that you admired growing up, they all experienced this same adversity. They all experienced this point that someone told them that they weren't capable of doing something. Now this is where it gets interesting because just like you, they had the same two options that they could take. After hearing that initial shock of someone telling you that you cannot do something, you either have the choice of taking one path, the path that was traveled by the greatest athletes, best business leaders and performers of all time, or you take the other path, the path of eventual mediocrity and settling for what others call realistic. Now this point or this decision was where the greatest leaders, athletes, and performers started to become the person that you know them as today. After hearing the negativity from someone that said, you can't possibly do this, it sent these individuals in towards a path of massive success. It plays in their mind like a broken record. It's like a track on repeat when they train, study, and prepare. It runs all the time until it's time to perform. Then it's silent. The mind becomes totally focused on the task at hand, but the work to get there was full of noise from doubters. If you don't believe this, listen to what David Goggins has to say about it. It became such a source of fuel that it was amazing because I know why you hate me. You hate me because you're probably in the bed right now. You're probably an underachiever. You're probably somebody who doesn't want to do anything with your life. So I make you question everything about yourself. So I'm going to continue making you question yourself by coming out here and being even more successful. It's like this in every industry, in every field. Eminem, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, Jordan Peterson, Tom Brady, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, and even the king of kindness in the business world, Gary Vee, takes what a doubter says and uses it to fuel his own success. So why do people find this toxic and why do they say it hinders someone long term? Is it wrong? Is it right? Is it sustainable? These are the questions and the responses that people ask about the motivations of some of the greatest achievements of all time. Now this comes down to where our society has shifted. Now, I came across this article. I'm not going to reference the name or the source to protect the author, but they listed out the top 10 traits of toxic masculinity. Some of these traits were being stoic, having no emotion, being dominant, and taking risks. Now, you and I both know that some of the ways that these people accomplished their goals was by being stoic in the face of doubt and removing emotion towards a win or a loss, staying neutral and steady. They chased absolute dominance in their craft and expected nothing less than the pursuit of excellence. And without a doubt, they laid it all out by taking risks. Now, an article that lays out that these traits are part of toxic masculinity, I'll let you be the judge. But this isn't abnormal in our society to think this way. Now, another interesting note of all those top performers that I just listed, 
they're all over their 40s. Yeah, they've had more time to develop the accolades and to develop the success. But I think it's pretty safe to say that our mentality is not the same as a society as it was then. Check this out. If you look at this clip of this PE class in the 1970s, it's almost unrecognizable of what PE class looks like today. Everyone in this class was expected to hit a certain performance level. I'm not talking like a 500 pound back squat or run a sub five minute mile, do a push up, run a mile in under 10 minutes. In my own generation, the millennials, as we were growing up, there became this trend of the participation trophy. It was used as a way to show that everyone can win, but that's the issue. Not everyone is a winner. It gets worse because after the participation trophy, youth competition starts to slide. It became playing time is to be expected instead of earned. And then these same kids take that from childhood and take it into adulthood, into their business careers. And this is where we are now. A six-figure salary is expected after one year of an entry-level job. A top-level management role is expected after six months of experience. And then there's this belief that these boomers with years of experience in the workplace don't have as much value to add because they didn't grow up with technology. That is what gave the younger generation, my generation, inflated egos and this false sense of confidence. So in a world where minds were taught that everyone is supposed to win at some point, playing time is to be expected, wealth is to be expected and evenly distributed, and success is to be given not earned. It's no wonder why using the doubt and the negativity from someone to absolutely rage towards your pursuit is called toxic by the general public. This docile point of view has been programmed into the mind at a very young age. People today will see others using doubt and negativity to fuel them towards their success and say that they need help or they have a mental issue or they're so angry. I've heard it myself, but I think this is something that needs to be embraced. I think it's something that if channeled correctly can move the entire world forward because there is not much more motivating than someone telling you that you cannot do something. Just like Jordan Peterson says, become a monster, but learn to control it. Now, coming from someone who has used this in their own life to achieve a goal, to use it as a fire to keep going, I can say that the doubt placed upon you can work in your favor. I've never been more fired up than when someone tells me that I cannot do something. But I can also say that the same people that fueled my motivation, no matter what I was going through, at the very end of it all, when I had achieved the goal, I didn't feel like I needed to tell them. Yeah, I felt accomplished. I felt good about it, but I also felt a little empty. The reason why I felt empty was because, and I did this, but I don't even think this person cares. So although part of me felt empty, you can still feel accomplishment because you did something that most people won't. I realized that most people are going to doubt you because they cannot even fathom the size of the goal that you're taking on. They can't even realistically imagine it in their own life. It's a blessing to be able to use this as motivation, but beneath it all, it's a curse because you know no matter how well you perform, no matter what you achieve, you cannot change someone's mind.